Excellent. Okay. I am Zion. I'm an Aleph. I assume we made it to the top of the DAF. I hope yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So this uh, shear is being given Lezefer Nishma Sihuda Arye Ben Aaron Yoel on the occasion of his first year of cycle. Okay. Okay. So Amar Amemar. Amima says, Hilchasa Osios Niknos Bemesira. So the Girsa of the Rashbam is what we just read. That the halacha is that in order for, let's say, uh, I have a lender with a promissory note that a borrower owes him money and he wants to sell this um, promissory note to a third party, Levi. Uh, so let's say Ruvain is the lender. Ruvain can sell uh, this indebtedness of Shimon to Levi by just handing over the promissory note without there being a separate star that says, like a, a Papa had uh, said, would be necessary that you'd have to write a separate star that says, uh, that uh, Levi is acquiring the star and all of the indebtedness, which is recorded in the star, that is not necessary because a separate star doesn't really accomplish anything. The Girsa of Tosvos, which is the accepted Girsa Lahalacha, which is how we paskin in Shulchan Aruch, is that, that there's a word missing over here, and it should be, Ein osios niknos b'mesira, that we do paskin like a papa, that it's necessary to, in addition to giving over the actual star, the actual promissory note from Ruben to uh, Levi, it would also be necessary for Ruben to write a separate star saying that Levi has hereby acquired all of the indebtedness of Shimon, which is recorded in uh, the promissory note, because otherwise the giving over of the star itself uh, accomplishes absolutely nothing. Thank you. You could say, let's saw a piece to Huiso, that it was only for purposes of the paper uh, being used as a, a bottle stopper, uh, and not necessarily because Ruben was uh, selling to Levi the indebtedness that's included in the star. Okay, so Amale Ravashi La Mamer. So Vashi asked the Mamer, whatever it is that you just said, was it Gemara or Sabara? Is this a tradition that you had, or is this based, thank you very much, or is this based on some sort of a logical rationale? So Amale he said, look, nobody can make up their mind what the Girsa is. So obviously it's just a Gemara, it's a tradition. Uh, so Amma Ravashi, Ravashi says, it's really a Sabara too. Sabara, Nami, who? There's a different Girsa, Girsa Ravashi Amar. Doesn't meaningfully change the the uh, the, the definition of or the the uh, explanation. Bavashi Omar Sabara Namihu says it's also a logical rationale according to the way the Rashbam would learn the Osios Mili Ninu because if I have a separate standing star, so what is it accomplishing? All this being sold, the words. So what does it accomplish to put down words in order to sell words? Umili bemili lo mekanyan. A separate star doesn't accomplish anything to just sell words. So the giving over the star is good enough. The way in which Atosvos learns this line is that the giving over of the star itself is just mili. Mili itself, just giving over the words, doesn't accomplish anything. You need a separate star. So whatever is the uh, shita over here, whether osios niknos or the way we paskin, like tosos enoki osios niknos b'mesiva, there's now a kasha. The actual kasha uh, is not going to really get off the ground until the next omen. Below, is that really true? Whatever it is, is it really true? Rab says, in the name of Rav Yitzchak, that there are two different types of shtaros when you're selling property. Uh, in terms of whether the star absolutely has to be written or not, or whether the sudet, whether the underlying, let's say, field that's being sold, that's evidenced by the star, is really sold. If, let's say, the way the Rashbam learns that, that a seller makes a Kenyan sudar, he asks the maiden to give him a handkerchief, he lifts up the handkerchief, and he says, oh, I want you to acquire this field for a lady, for a third party. The kasulo is a star, and now the Aidim write the star, so Jose Bishtar, um, so Ruvain, who's selling his star to selling his sada to Levi, is allowed to retract on the star because uh, there was no Kenyan made per se on a star. He's just selling the field. He made a Kenyan suitor to sell the field. <clears throat> but he's not allowed to retract on the field itself because he had sold the field through a Kenyan suitor. Another way of learning the sugya brought by the Torah is that he wasn't necessarily a Kenyan Suda, but he said, go make a Kenyan Chazaka. They already made a Kenyan Chazaka on the field. Either way, once the Kenyan is made on the field, he can't retract on the field, but he can retract on recording 
this acquisition through a star because that much he never promised. He says to the witnesses, listen, I'm selling the field um, to, uh, to Levi, but only on condition that there's going to be a star written. So now even the sale of the field is not going to get off the ground unless the star is actually written. So Jose is because he didn't make any commitment that he's definitely going to write a star. He says, if I write a star, so then the field is sold. So he can retract Bema star, Bema sold. If he retracts on the star, Mimela, he's also retracted on the field. So Chia Baravin, in the name of Rafuna, says that um, uh, the, he is going to, so the previous statement was Rabba Bar Yitzchak, the name of Rav. This is Rav Chia Baravin in the name of Rav. And Rav Chia Baravin adds that there are actually three shtaros. Shlosh shtarosin. Trey Adam. Two shtaros are the types that we just described. One where you can retract from the star, but not from the sale of the field. The second where you can retract from the star, Mimela. You also retract from the sale of the field. And then Edak, there is a third case. Imkadam mocher, a of is a star. A mocher, a seller, Ruvain really needs money. So he figures, I'd like Levi someday, uh, hopefully today, to buy my field. So I'm going to write a star, even though Levi's not around. He doesn't know anything about it, but I'm going to already write the star that I'm selling the field to Levi. And hopefully Levi will come around and do it. Um, as it says, we learn that it is possible to write a star for a mocher, for a seller, even though Levi, the purchaser, is not there, he may not even know about it yet. Um, but, and Levi is taking a chance because maybe he's going to lose the star. And before Levi even pays him any money, Levi is going to find that the star is written in his name and he's going to pick it up and say, ah, the field already is in my possession. It doesn't matter. Ruben is willing to take a chance because he really needs this money. So he's preparing the star. So in such a case where Ruben has already prepared the star, if Levi then makes a Kenyan Chazaka, so the star is automatically acquired um, wherever the star is located, even though it's never even passed hands. Vizui Shishaninu, and this is what we have learned. Nechasim Sheinlem Achrayas, Nikmim Nechasim Sheishlen Achrayas. If Ruvain is selling both real property and movable property, once the purchaser makes a Kenyan on the real property, Mimela, by dint of that, he also acquires the personal property. How does he make the acquisition on the real property? There are three different ways. Because if he can pay money, Ustara could be through a, a contract that he receives. The Chazaka, or uh, it can be uh, through his making a king in Chazaka, digging a hole or something like that, or building a fence on the property. And then once he does that, mainly he will also acquire the personal property that is being sold. What's the Kasha? So the Rash Bam says that the Kasha is like this. Here, in this particular case, the star um, has not even passed into the hands of Levi. Ruvain wrote the star. He never even gave it to Levi. And nonetheless, Levi acquires it. So we see if he can acquire the field, he can acquire the star. Yeah, he acquires the star once he does the king and Chazaka on the field, even though the star never went, even went into his hands. So then Kol Shekane, if there was a star, if there was a separate star that was written saying, you, Levi, have hereby acquired this land. So it should seem that that star would also be meaningful and that should also be good. So how is it that we say that a separate star that's written for a star to be, for let's say a promissory note uh, to be acquired is a, a meaningless, that it's only merely it doesn't acquire, it, do, it doesn't accomplish anything. According to Tosmos, the Kashi is like this. He says that, that um, uh, what kind of a Kenyan are we talking about over here? By dint of which, Levi is able to acquire the star. It's because of Agav. That's called Agav means by dint of. Agav, but because of the fact that Levi is a taking acquisition of the field, he also Mimela is acquiring uh, the star. And that's a very weak type of acquisition, we would think. So we see that that is something which works um, even without any Mesiva, without any giving over when Ruvain is selling his own property. So let's say he wasn't selling his own property. He was selling a promissory note that says that Shimon owes him money. So then it should follow that even in that case, okay, maybe it wouldn't be good enough without any Messira, but at least a Messira of the star without a separate star saying that all the indebtedness has been acquired should be good enough. The answer to both of these kashas or to the kasha the way the Rashbam learns and the kasha the way Tosus learns, same answer, which is 
Agav shiny. Agav is different. When you're buying personal property, it could even be a star, by dint of the fact that, that you're also acquiring real property because the seller is selling both of the real property and the personal property, that happens to be a particularly powerful acquisition, works in ways that other acquisitions wouldn't. We'll bring you a proof. The Hamad Bea, because if you're selling a coin, normally a coin is something which can't be sold just by picking up a handkerchief and saying, I am here by transferring a coin to somebody else. No, lo nikni bakhalifin. Coins are not something which can be bought even through the picking up of a handkerchief, which is considered to be a pretty good Kenyan. We do it even in a Carson's dish, but not with respect to coins. Coins can't be acquired that way. But if you're acquiring the coin through the acquisition of Agav, because of the fact that, that the purchaser is also buying real property of the seller, and the seller is thereby also transferring coins that he might have in a Swiss bank account or wherever, that is going to work. The Agav Ara Nikni, how do we know Agav works? So even for Matbea, for a coin to be bought if the purchaser is buying a real property of the seller, like the case of a papa. He had to have a papa. What was the case of a papa? Somebody owed him a lot of money. Pavale Tracer Alfe Zuze Bechuzai. The Bechuzai people, they owed him 13,000 coins. That's a lot of coins, okay? Um, so he wanted, excuse me, 12,000 coins. So they owed him 12,000 coins. Akninu Niale, Rav Shmuel Bar Acha Agava Seifa. So he gave a harsha. Basically, he said that for purposes of being my a duly appointed representative, so that uh, the people who owe me the money will be willing to give my representative the coins because they know that once they give my representative the coins, they'll be off the hook because he's going to bear the full responsibility. Mm -hmm. So he said he rented out or sold to Rav Shmuel Bar Acha the threshold, the safer, the threshold of his house. And he said, I got by dint of the fact that Rav Shmuel Bar Acha is receiving an ownership interest in the threshold of my house, I'm also transferring him the right to all of these matbeas, these 12,000 coins. He's getting the 12,000 coins in his possession. But Agav Asefa the Basi. He also, so Shmuel Baracha then went to the Bechuzai, said, look, I was, I acquired, um, I have a star, he showed them, he acquired the, the threshold of a puppet's house. And by virtue of that, he said, I was able to acquire the coins. So give me the coins because it will be my responsibility because I made the acquisition. And they said, that's good enough for us. So they gave him the coins. Rav Papa was so overjoyed to get his coins. He went all the way to Tavach, which is, I guess, a far out town, not as far as going all the way to Beit Huzai, but he went all the way to Tavach in order to meet um, uh, the, the, in order to meet Rav Shmuel Baraka, who is bringing him the coins. So we see that it worked. Yeah, the acquisition worked. So we see Agar is particularly powerful, but it doesn't disprove the point of whether Oxios and Niknos from Mesira, according to the Rashbam, or the way we pass can in Oxios, Niknos from Mesira, according to Tosos. Okay, Abalo Makar, Loa Sabadim, Loa Samartsufim, Loa Santiki, Vikule. The Mishnah had said that when you sell a boat, so then a lot of things come together with the boat, but not the slaves who work on the boat, not the Matsufin, not to the bags in which the merchandise is placed, and not the Antiki, and not to the Antiki. What is the Antiki? So the Antiki goes like this. My Antiki, I'm a papa iska de begava. The Antiki is the merchandise that was inside the bags that hold the merchandise. So those things as well do not automatically get sold when somebody sells a boat, unless they say that they are selling everything which is inside of the boat. Mm -hmm. So in such a case, the Mishnah says that everything would be transferred. Next Mishnah. If you sell the wagon, you haven't sold the mules that pull the wagon. If you only sold the mules, you haven't sold the wagon. If you sell the yoke, you don't sell the two um, cows or the two bulls that the yoke is placed upon. If you sell the two bulls, then you haven't sold the yoke automatically. Whatever is specified gets sold, even if a large amount of money is paid, and you figure that this amount of money would, would cover both, both of the wagon and the mules, or both of the yoke and the oxen. Nonetheless, if it, you don't specify, if it only, you only say prados, only the prados get sold. You only say mm -hmm. koron, um, only the koron gets sold, etc. So Rabbi Yuda Omer, Rabbi Yuda says, no, not true. It depends on how much money is transferred. Hadamim modiyin. You look at how much money passed hands. Kate said, what does that mean? Amalo. 
if the purchaser says, please sell to me your yoke with 200 zoos. I'll pay you 200 zoos for your yoke. Come on. However you do it. Shade at seven for my zoos. Everybody knows that yoke, a yoke of oxen, it costs a lot less than 200 zoos. So it must be that he had a mind to buy and purchase the oxen as well. They say nothing doing. It doesn't matter how much money was sold. If the person said, I'm only buying the yoke, so the yoke is on him. All he gets is the yoke. He doesn't get the oxen together with the yoke. Says the Gemara. Mm-hmm. What? No, oh, no, and vow because it's considered to be a willing uh, waiver, meaning that he knows very well that this amount of money, he's offering this amount of money, and he knows very well this is an exorbitant price, and he's willing to pay it. Uh, that's the assumption that he's giving it basically as a matana. Sometimes you'll give a lot of money to a seller because you want to, you're doing a good deed. You don't want the seller to feel bad that it's stuck. Oh, so you say, I'm going to buy this little yoke from you. And oh, it's worth so much to me. I'll pay 200 zoos. And this is a way um, of a charitably um, giving to uh, to the seller in a mechubad way. Says the Gemara, Tani Rav Tachalifa Bar Ma'ava Kamei Darabi Yavo. Machar Es Karon, Machar Es Prados. So he says differently from our Mishnah. He said he had a he had a tradition, a Tanaic tradition Rav Tachalifa had um, that he had received that says that when you sell the wagon, you do sell the mules. Aye, but our Mishnah says to the contrary. It says that if you sell the wagon, you have not sold the mules. So Amalei Ismaya. So Rav Tachalifa said to Rabbi Avo, so should I uh, delete? Uh, should I erase this tradition that I received? Is it a mistaken tradition? So I'm a lay low. Don't erase it. Just explain it. Tetage masnisech, your tradition must be talking about a case, and this is very important, Badukinbo, where they are attached to each other. If, in fact, you buy a wagon and the mules are attached to the wagon, so then it's understood that when you're paying for the wagon, you're also paying for the mules. The wagon's not going to move without the mules. You pay for the mules without the wagon, so it's a shokonarok. It says, hmm. So then it could be you just bought it. Even then, even if they're attached, you only said the produce, you only bought the, the mules because the mules are valuable. They're usable even without the wagon. But if you're paying for the wagon and the, the, and you don't say mules, but the wagon's attached to the mules, it's understood that you're paying for the mules as well. So machar es and lo machar es the chule. You sold the tzemen, the yoke, you have not sold the oxen. So hechi dummy. What's the case that we're talking about over here where the uh, Tanakama and Rabbi Yehuda, with the Chachamim and Rabbi Yehuda, are disagreeing with each other. Ilema, the Karol at Simda Simda, is it a, if it's a place where they call a yoke a yoke, well, a buck a bucker, and they call oxen oxen, pshita. So then it's obvious that all that's sold, how could Rabbi Yehuda even disagree? Even if a lot of money was, was, was paid, it's obvious that if the person says they're buying semit, they're buying the yoke alone, so they're buying the yoke alone. Pshita Simda Zavinle, Bakalo Zavinle. Bella, rather, what are we talking about? We must be talking about the following scenario. The Karule Nami Labakat Simda. So if it's a place where everybody also calls a bucker, they also call the uh, oxen Simda yoke. In other words, that everybody, when they say yoke, they also mean oxen. So then everyone understands that even the Chachamim should not disagree with Rabbi Yehuda. It should be obvious that Kule Zavin Lay. That all mm-hmm. of it has been sold when basically the purchase price mm-hmm. has been made, even if most of the people in the city call a yoke oxen as well, and mm-hmm. it's the right amount of money, obviously the oxen have been sold as well. Lot Srika, so we say no. The case is for Asra, this is a place to correlate that sim that sim the baka as a general rule. Only a yoke is called a yoke, and only oxen is called oxen. The economy, and there's a small part of the population, that's the way the Vilna Gon explains in his uh parish and shokhanach. The economy, there's a small amount of the population, not a sizable amount, the minority of the population, the Karol the Bakat Simda, that will also occasionally refer to the oxen as a yoke. That when they say yoke, they also mean the oxen. So, Rabbi Yudha says that's good enough, even if it's only a small part of the population, good enough as long as the amount of money indicates that it's enough to buy the oxen as well. So then it would also cause the oxen to be acquired. Rabban and Savi, no. That's only if the majority of the population also refers to a yoke as oxen. But if it's only a small minority part of the population, then ain't a dumb imraya, that even if a lot of money was spent on the yoke, it does not include the oxen. 
and then we ask a question. But if that's the case, we do know that the purchaser intended to buy some oxen so the seller can get away by saying, I'm not going to give you the oxen because you only mentioned the yoke. But the purchaser could say, it's a mekatos. I thought that I'm buying, uh, that I am only buying uh, the yoke. And therefore, for this amount of money, I never waived my claim um, of ona, right? I never claimed that, that I never waived the claim of ona. Um, and therefore, mm-hmm. so then we should really cancel the transaction and say the yoke should be returned by uh, the uh, the purchaser and the seller should return the money, this exorbitant amount of money that the purchaser gave him because it should be bitomekach. You want to argue that the Chachamim don't hold by the concept of Ona'a and Bitomekach, that they don't hold by these categories? The law, is that really true? Isn't there a Mishnah that says explicitly that the Chachamim really do hold by the principle of Ona'a? And we can argue that therefore they should hold by Bitomekach as well. Babi Yuda Omer. Rabbi Yehuda is of the opinion that if you sell a Sefer Torah or an animal or a precious jewel, so those are things that don't have an objective value. And therefore, no matter how much has been charged, there's no concept of Onan. Amulo, the Chachamim said, nothing doing. Only those categories that are explicitly excluded by Xerah Sakasub are excluded from Onan, namely Avadim, Shtaros, Rekakos, slaves, um, uh, contracts, and real property. But for everything else, we do apply the principle of Ona, including with respect uh, to um, oxen and yokes. So uh, therefore, uh, they said, only Avadim, Shtaros, or Karkos are excluded from Ona. So they say, yeah, let's reinterpret what the Chachamim mean. The Chachamim are really basically saying as um, as follows. My ain Adamim Raya, what does it mean when they said ain domim raya that the purchase price is not a proof? That just means that the purchaser cannot demand that the oxen will be transferred as well. My ain domim raya nami diktani david bito mekach, but it means that the entire transaction will be dissolved. That basically um, they don't get their oxen, but they can say since we paid so much money for the yoke, or we want to return the yoke and get our money back. No problem. Money back guarantee. Be by same. Or, or alternatively, we can say, um, ki amar abadan, oh no, bitu mekach. No, oh no, bitu mekach only applies when it's possible that a person made a mistake. In this particular case, the purchaser didn't make a mistake. The purchaser knew this was a town where most people do not call a yoke, uh, do not call oxen by the term yoke. So when he said, I'm going to pay 200 zoos for a yoke, he really meant he's going to pay 200 zoos. He's not going to, if you pay $8 instead of $6, okay, maybe you made a mistake. You can ask for a cancellation of the sale. You pay $200 when otherwise normally the price would be $10. So then it's clear that you knew what you were doing. Um, we only say, oh, no, but they should das toa within a reasonable margin of error. But if it's much more beyond the reasonable margin of error, low, low, we do not say that. Ema matana yaible. Rather, we say, as I explained earlier, that in such a case, it must be that the purchaser had intended to give a nice gift of maybe as a generous way of giving stock or maybe there had been a previous favor that the seller or someone in his family had done to the purchaser. But for whatever the motivation would have been, we say Matana Yaiv Le meant to simply give a gift and therefore the transaction is final. He gets to keep his yoke, but he doesn't get his money back. Let's stop here.